So it appears to be for what all of you have expressed that the baseline exists for solid growth of this type of alliance. So now my question to you is, what are the specific contributions from the private sector towards this alliance and what are the contributions from the public sector as well? Does everything revolve just around money and, and funding? Before, they said the leading cause of death of youth was lead poisoning. Bullets. All right. The crime rate was just out of hand. If you stop and you look at Washington, D.C., on average, the 300 to 400 homicides a year, and you ask the question, how does that happen? And you look at Boston, I think it was the year 2000, it was like 1% of that. And the question was, what is the difference between Washington and Boston? How do they control it? And what Boston did was a total community effort of partnerships. The police, the mayor, the churches, all of the nonprofits, the schools got together and we go, we're not going to let a kid get killed around a school. They will be educated. And I remember three years ago, there was one homicide around the school. The city went crazy. Who let their guard down? Highly organized, social capital at its best, okay? Because they cared and they got organized to do something. So this issue of how we connect disconnected youth, okay? Connectivity is where it's at. And so we have to look at what we're up against. If you look at Jamaica, um, I have the honor of sitting here today with the representative of the PSOJ. In 1978, there was a youth violence that was out of control. And Bob Marley organized the first peace concert. And I was invited down to be part of the peace commission. When we met with the youth leaders in Matthews Lane, in Trenchtown, in Warica Hills, we'd say, what do you want? And they go, somebody that listens to us, somebody that respects us, somebody that will give us hope. And so we met with the PSOJ, and the first reaction of the PSOJ was, we're a businessmen's association. I mean, Tim's point is right. Many business leaders have not gotten this. But what the PSOJ figured out was, we will not be doing business as usual unless we get a hold of this, we won't be doing business at all. And so the PSOJ rolled up their sleeves and we brought the money in, the grant money to fund inner city Rasta youth groups, call them groups or gangs. And what they wanted for the PSOJ was technical training, mentoring and guidance to create their own employment. They weren't even looking for formal employment with benefits. Just show us how to create a job and keep it going. And so down on Machu's Lane Man, they set up third wheel shoes and crisis in a restaurant and these kind of things. And all of a sudden it started turning around. But it started slipping back because the educational system in Jamaica started dropping off. And the 800 pound gorilla in this room in all these discussions is what's happening to education? And if you look at Jamaica, all those basic data points, the quality of that education, 101% solutions that you've got to bring together and create hope and create, as Tim mentioned, these paths out of poverty. Now, if you... If I, no, so, just wanted to say, go ahead. The same conversation took place seven years ago in Rio de Janeiro with the Inter-American Development Bank, and they were looking at what are we going to do to get kids back in school? We've got to get them back in school to educate them. And Pele, who was in that conversation, said, why would a youth go back into a dirty, poorly organized school with a bunch of teachers who don't care? You will not get those kids back in school. You must meet them with their passion. You must find that good, constructive passion and work with them. What is that? Fuji ball. If you can figure out how to take a football organize an educational curriculum around that, bring them into a team setting and give them life skills. Go to the private sector and say to them, what's your problem with employees? They don't show up on time, they don't know how to resolve conflict, um, they have attitudes, they've got these life problems, soft life skills. We go, we'll take care of those. We will grade, sort, recruit, train, but open the door give them access to a job and mentor them.
and see what happens. And I would like perhaps from That's Aganar. Okay, thank you very much, That's Steve. That's Aganar. And we're in 11 countries now, and the traction through partnerships, we're in Ciudad Juarez, we're working with the business leaders, we're working with the community foundations, we're working with anyone and everyone who wants to work with us.